therefore, we need to compute the SS and a DF for the variance between treatments, and we need another SS and DF for the variance within treatments, to obtain the SS and DF values. About 4 in 5 college students experience statistics anxiety. If you are an ordinary mortal, this video is for you. If you are a superhuman, you can skip this video. Thank you. The reality is statistics are everywhere, from news reports, to TV ads, to fitness and calorie trackers. And, in most cases, people are not bothered by statistics. Stats anxiety is a negative state of emotional arousal. It can occur when statistics are presented in any form. But it usually occurs in the classroom. Statistics is increasingly required as a subject in the social sciences. Of 374 universities in North America, 98% require statistics as a requirement of the psychology major. So, given that you are probably watching this video because of enrollment in a stats class, it's important to first define what stats anxiety is, and what it is not. Although stats anxiety and math anxiety are related, research shows that they are also distinct. Indeed, studying statistics may be closer to studying a foreign language. Statistics were originally calculated by hand and with calculators, requiring extensive knowledge of mathematical formulas. Today, computers now do most of the number crunching. The major challenge in contemporary stats courses is not calculating formulas. Instead, it is understanding jargon, selecting appropriate analysis, and interpreting data patterns. Also, stats anxiety is distinguishable from general attitudes toward statistics. You may actually regard statistics as valuable and still experience anxiety while studying them. To alleviate stats anxiety, it is necessary to understand that anxiety in general is a complicated and interconnected response that typically involves withdrawal behavior. Arousal is regulated by the sympathetic nervous system, including increased heart rate and blood pressure. However, a person can experience arousal without feeling anxious. In addition to arousal, anxiety involves dread that a bad event will occur in the future. Usually, the dread is associated with a perceived lack of control over the event. The third component of anxiety is negative emotion, which typically involves experiences of fear, sadness, irritability, or anger. Behaviorally, anxiety is alleviated by withdrawal behavior. Students with stats anxiety tend to hold off enrolling in stats classes. When enrolled, they tend to procrastinate. When they do engage in their coursework, stats anxious students question their ability to interpret data. They also fear both their instructors as well as asking for help. Now that we understand the systems and behaviors associated with stats anxiety, we can turn our attention on how to reduce it. First, in terms of arousal, it's important to understand that performance on any task is best at moderate levels. Too little arousal or too much arousal interferes with performance. When you are bored, you cannot persist on tasks. If you are overly anxious, you cannot concentrate. At moderate levels, you are in an ideal state to engage in complex tasks. In most cases, your goal is to moderate your sympathetic nervous system activity. Focus on deep, calming breaths. Stretch to alleviate muscle tension. In terms of cognition, anxiety forces us to think about the source of that fear. If we dread statistics and worry about the implications of failure, that interferes with learning. Take a moment to reflect on your stats class goals. If your goal is to increase your skills as a student, this is a learning goal. It focuses on the process and not the outcomes. In contrast, performance goals relate to outcomes. If your goal is to pass a class, not fail, look smart, or avoid appearing dumb to yourself or others, this is a performance goal. 
these goals are not mutually exclusive. Ideally, you would achieve both goals. The problem is that students who focus predominantly on performance goals are prone to stats anxiety. This is the only formula to remember from this video. If you have high performance goals, but low personal belief in your ability, you are likely to experience stats anxiety. Relative to high performance students, high learning students tend to persist in the face of challenges, and they are more likely to develop useful problem solving strategies. If you believe intelligence is fixed, then a stats class is a test of your abilities. If you believe intelligence is not fixed, then a stats class is a chance to grow. Finally, anxiety involves the experience of negative emotions like sadness and anger. If you believe emotions are fixed, they are outside of your control. Emotions just happen. Conversely, if you believe emotions are malleable, research shows you are more likely to self-regulate your emotions and receive more social support. In short, if you moderate your arousal, remember learning is incremental, and regulate negative emotions, you are less likely to experience anxiety leading to procrastination. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Now, you too are a superhuman who studies statistics. Shouldn't you be getting back to your homework?